Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to a special outreach update from Jerusalem, Israel. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There has never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua, God, than this generation. We're not setting any dates, we're not date setters, but we know that the time is near. Hidgalut, Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. As of until the making of this video, the government of Israel has not yet re-elected a prime minister. Benjamin Netanyahu, Bibi Netanyahu, is still the prime minister of Israel. They're trying to do everything they can to make sure that he will not continue to be the prime minister of Israel. They're trying to indict him. The same thing that's happening in Israel is happening in the United States of America. They're trying to impeach the president of the United States, Donald Trump. As believers in Yeshua and Jesus, we understand that all government authority has been established by God. Romans chapter 13 verse 1, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And we know that everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. We find this in the book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15. It is by me that kings reign and rulers enact just law. God, Yeshua, has positioned Donald Trump to be the president of the United States of America and positioned Benjamin Netanyahu, Bibi Netanyahu, to be the prime minister of Israel. Israel has never had a better friend than Donald Trump in the United States of America. Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump are the two most hated men in the world today. The devil knows that everything started in Israel and everything is going to end in Israel. And that's why he's in rage. It's a spiritual warfare. As the people of Israel are confused at this period of time, we go out and we preach the gospel. The elections of Israel, the indictments, and the impeachment in the United States of America has opened the door for the gospel to go forth. We're not saying that Donald Trump or Benjamin Netanyahu are angels. We're not saying that they're believers, but we are saying that they've been positioned by the God of Abraham, Isaacs, and Jacob. Satan can go as crazy as he wants. Nothing is more powerful than the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yeshua Jesus. Whoever God wants to be established in government, that's who will be established. And no man, no angel fallen or so, no devil can stop it. As the Messiah of Israel Ministries team were praying, I began preaching the message. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15. It is by me that kings reign and rulers enact just law. I began asking the people who they believe will continue to be the prime minister of Israel. Many were saying they believe Netanyahu will continue, but the leftists are trying to take him out with lies and false accusations. There was a religious Jewish Orthodox man who was handing out papers telling the people that if Benjamin Netanyahu does not unite with the religious leaders, he will not continue to be the prime minister. I asked him what his name was. He said, Menachem, I introduced myself and we began to talk. I asked Menachem, do you not support Benjamin Netanyahu? Menachem said, of course I do, but Benjamin Netanyahu must unite with the religious people in order to continue. I asked Menachem, what do you mean unite with the religious people? Menachem said, he must ban all businesses on the Saturday. He must not let people drive in Israel. That's what we mean. Menachem went on to say, although Netanyahu is working with the religious people, he still is not turning Israel into a religious country. And our group wants that if he wants our vote. I asked Menachem, who is in control of the country? Who is in control of the world? Who has the last call? Menachem turned to me and said, the rabbis have the last call, and therefore they will determine who will continue to be the prime minister. I then turned the Bible to Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15 and read together with Menachem. It is by me that kings reign and rulers enact just law. I asked Menachem, is this Bible verse speaking about God or about the rabbis? Menachem's voice 
became very low. The Holy Spirit was working. Menachem answered, It's speaking about God. Then I told Menachem with love and compassion, Then you've answered yourself. It is not the rabbis that have the last call. It is God. And God is the one who will decide who will continue to be the Prime Minister of Israel. Because as the Bible says, it is by me that kings reign and rulers enact just law. Menachem was speechless. He stopped handing out brochures to people. I told Menachem, this world is temporary. Ultimately, God wants to show us that he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in order to bring us to the kingdom to be with him for eternity. I then asked Menachem, why is it so important for you that people don't drive on the Sabbath? Menachem said, because God requires us not to drive on the Sabbath. I then asked Menachem, can you show me that in the Word of God? Menachem said, I don't know if it's in the Word of God. I read the rabbi books. The rabbis explain the Word of God, and they say we can't drive on the Sabbath. That's why we need a prime minister that obeys the rabbis. I told Menachem, it's not in the Word of God. The rabbis changed the meaning. All God wants us to do on the Sabbath to keep it as a day of rest. You can drive on the Sabbath. You can have a barbecue on the Sabbath. You can do whatever you want. God is not searching for religion. He's searching for our heart. Menachem then became defensive and asked, why would the rabbis change it? Because most of the rabbis have rejected the true message of the Bible. Menachem was getting curious. What is the true message of the Bible? It was clear this was a divine appointment. It was time for the full gospel. I began reading many Bible scriptures with Menachem. Isaiah 53, Jeremiah 23, Psalms 2, and many, many other Bible passages. The Holy Spirit was working. Menachem then said, I need to go ask my rabbi what these Bible verses mean. I'm confused. I then asked Menachem, Have you ever heard of Arav Yitzchak Aduri? Rabbi Yitzchak Aduri. Menachem's eyes lit up. He said, Not only have I heard of Rabbi Yitzchak Aduri, but everything he said, everything he taught, our rabbi takes at face value. It was time to take out the evangelistic tool, the book, the rabbi, the secret message, and the identity of the Messiah. When Menachem saw the book, he asked, Is this book written by Rabbi Kaduri? I said, The book is not written by Rabbi Kaduri, but it's about Rabbi Kaduri, and it's documented with a note that he left revealing the name of the Messiah. I turned the book to page 53 and read the note together with him in Hebrew and then decoded it as Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri wrote, leaving the name of the Messiah, Yeshua or Yehoshua. When Menachem saw this, he was in complete shock. He said, how can this be? This can't be. But I see the signature. I know that that's his signature. How can this be? He kept on repeating himself over and over again. I told Menachem, those Bible scriptures that we read right now together are the same Bible scriptures that Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri read and received the revelation that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Yeshua is God. Praise Yeshua. Menachem could not work anymore. He could not hand out these brochures anymore. He knew the truth. He said, I'm confused. I can't work for these brochures anymore. I'm resigning. I gave Menachem a Bible, a Tanakh, an Old Testament, with the Messianic prophecies underlined. Gave him a copy of the book, the rabbi, the secret message, and the identity of the Messiah, with contact information to contact the ministry. We pray that Menachem will have a revelation, will have a dream, will have a vision, that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Yeshua is God. What started off with an evil motivation has been turned around for good by God. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Let's stand together in prayer for Menachem and for all those that heard the gospel, that they would call on the name of Yeshua, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior, as God. Hamashiach. We will continue to preach the gospel. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. 
And the word in Hebrew for salvation is Jesus, Yeshua. So in Hebrew, it reads like this. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her Yeshua like a blazing torch. And we know that he's coming back with fire in his eyes to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. Revelation 5.5, 5, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, sending you blessings from Jerusalem, Israel, in the mighty name of Al Yehuda, the line of the tribe of Judah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Yeshua. Amen.